pretty much exactly the same as the other one. Uh, we discovered a subtlety here. This has to be 5.0, not 5. And the reason why is when you divide 5 by 9, you get 0. And so you multiply down 0, and you have 0. Uh, and so that was weird, right? And so you had to put 5.0 to make it a floating point number. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but otherwise, pretty much the same, right? And so you can see how you can make these converter programs really easily. Uh, this is the same way. So this constant name, that's okay. Uh, it's it's uh, what, another rule about the short names is if you're like within a function, short's perfectly fine. If you're sort of outside of a function, then maybe a little longer is better because uh, now it might be used all over the place and it's not as obvious. But the, the neat thing about like a short function like this is it's really easy to find where this is defined, right? It's just right there. So even if I'm like, what the heck is p to the g? I can be like, oh, oh, okay, I get what that is, right? So it, it's okay if it's uh, close. Um, uh, now, now the other change was he, he did scan line instead of scan f. He had some issues with uh, doing multiple of the same function. But basically the same one. You can look at the docs for, for the scan functions to see how they work. But, uh, this lets you get rid of the formatting uh, string. Uh, any questions about any of this code? OK, so uh, remember, this is doing pointers, which we'll cover later. And uh, this also involves types, which is what we'll cover next. You said you needed the 5.0 just because of the again? Why do you need the 5.0 again? So when you just do 5 divided by 9, it does integer division. Exactly. It won't give you the decimal place, so it becomes zero or whatever. So that's the problem. So we're, we're going to do the types next, but um, what happens when you don't? I mean, obviously it's still like okay, but there should be there must be some default type because we didn't give constant pack p to catch uh, <laughs> type. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so did it just assume float sixty four? I mean, could you drop float sixty four in there? Yeah, no, a great question. Uh, those things are defined in the spec in exhausting detail, um, which is great because in languages like C, they're often not, and like different compilers implement them differently. I, I'm not sure about the rules for uh, literals. That's what they call just a value, is a literal. So we can say an integer literal. An integer literal is a sequence of digits with an integer constant. Um, and so you can see it's one through nine. You can do uh, zero x, which is hexadecimal. Um, and, and you can see the floating point literal. So the thing that makes it clear is the dot. I use the dot, but it's got to be floating point. Um, if I don't use the dot, if I just use a number, then it's ambiguous, uh, and it sort of will default to the end. Uh, now, the example they had back there, which is interesting, which is kind of a neat feature, is when you do this, uh, it can be either an int or a uh, float64, depending on where you're using it. Um, so this doesn't like have a value yet. It's kind of weird. Uh, it gets the value when you use it. So because miles is a float 64, now it picks up, oh, that's a float 64. Treats it like a float 64. In this case, it doesn't matter, because it's, uh, but in, in, for division, it might matter. Um, so, but like I said, it's in the spec, it's described in detail. But, but that is a common issue with, with types, is the, oh yeah, I gotta do floating point, not integer. Um, another b difference between C and Go, and a lot of other programming languages, is Go is very, it requires you to do that. It doesn't, in, it doesn't do it for you, right? So it, it takes the strongly typed very seriously. And C is not strongly typed that way. Uh, it'll just do the cast for you without you asking, uh, and, and Go will complain. So if I do, if I had a, a fun, you know, I had var x int, and um, well, that, that's valid, if I can do that, but I can't do, right, it's gonna complain about this. Un mismatched types into float64, and so I had to convert them. Uh, C would let you do this. It would convert X into a float, and it would give you a value. But Go is like, no, 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 you can't mix match types. You gotta be one or the other. Uh, it catches bugs, is what it ends up doing. Uh, and like I said, those, those are the types, so we'll cover that. Uh, any other questions about this? You, you had a question back there. What was the? <coughs> does the does the uh, percent b? Is it a restrictor on the type of value that's right. entered? In other words, if a person types in a letter as opposed to an integer, will it? Yeah. So let's try that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so what it did here is it read a single letter H and then it like didn't do the rest. That's interesting. Um, so I guess it read it as zero. So what happens if we do this? So scan F. Um, returns an int and an error. So perhaps it returns an error. Uh, so we can look at that. So here's an example where we might use the blank identifier because I don't care about the number of things it parsed. Uh, but I want the error. So I would do it like this. So this returns the error. And let's see what that does. Float parsing invalid syntax. So, uh, to answer your question, it will do something by default, give it zero, but as soon as it saw T, it was like, that's not a floating point number, it returned an error. Uh, and you can look at that error, you can return it from that function. So you could, <laughs> you could write code to handle the error appropriately. Right. Uh, and we were just ignoring it before, we were just right. throwing it away. So, so yes, it does look at the type and it only parses numbers. Um, okay. Any other questions about this stuff? I just have one comment, and that's, uh, remember, we're learning this just to learn the language first, and then once we've learned the language, we're going to learn how to apply that towards, you know, doing server-side web programming. That's just the overall picture. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, the, the, another reason I'm stressing this is uh, you guys have been doing JavaScript, uh, which is weakly typed and goes strongly typed, and there's a big dis difference there, and the types are going to bite you if you're not used to seeing them. So. Uh, when we do the server-side web program, we use them a lot. So uh, that's why I think it's important for us to cover this pretty exhaustively, you know. Okay, so types. 